What is up guys, Jake here, and we are talking 4K crop and the new full frame Panasonic mirrorless camera that just dropped, I think, well, just got announced actually. I don't even think it's been technically dropped, but we're back on this format. Um, if you guys are new to the channel or if you've been here for a while, you know that um, this is maybe not looking as familiar. The numerical numbers were usually vlogs. I've changed up my style, so if there's a numerical thumbnail, it means I'm probably doing kind of this like almost live stream type talk, but it's actually recorded and then posted. Um, sort of my way to be personable with you guys, communicate with you guys, but then still have basically during the weeknights, because I mean, again, I still work a full-time job, for those of you who don't know, shooting this type of video on the weeknights, talking about tech, editing, filming, specs, etc. This fits in really great with the channel. And then on the weekends or on weeknights, if I plan ahead accordingly, but can't shoot for very long, that is when we're gonna start to again see those videos that I recently have started doing more of. And I, the biggest, most important, excited one that I did recently was get a real job. I'll put the link right here, link down below, link at the end of the video, whatever. Go check it out. Send me some love. Um, I'm just having a ton of fun getting back into why I did this, which is to be creative. I mean, we want to make videos to be creative, but then at the same time, I want an outlet, an avenue to be personable with you guys, um, you know, share, talk, edit, etc., but not have the pressures of trying to make a cinematic vlog. I think cinematic vlogs are really cool. Hats off to people who are doing those. But, you know, it's just, it's just not my forte. I don't like vlogging. Um, it's pretty hard on weeknights working a full-time job. So having these where I just sit down, talk with you guys about news, specs, editing techniques, things I've learned, feedback, etc., and mixing that in with my artistic videos when I have more time to make those and really put in the time. I'm, I'm already noticing like a huge swing in my mood because I felt like I needed to come home and I, you know, wasn't super great and balanced and I wanted to immediately get that next video out, try and come up with a good vlog, shoot good stuff. But we're switching to this format. So if you guys don't like these videos, you know, feel free to skip over them, but it's just kind of my way to be a human being with you guys, but then also have fun making art. So anyway, Enough of that, these videos are gonna get long. We're shooting it in full HD this time. Um, we're using the nicer microphone this time just to kind of try it out. Um, looks like it's still recording, which is important. Kind of wanted to test some of that out tonight. But anyway, we are talking Panasonic and the announcement of their new S series, which is a full frame mirrorless camera. And that is really, really exciting. And to be honest with you guys, when I first heard about it and saw the post, I think it was actually yesterday on Instagram, my heart dropped. I was like, no, Panasonic, are you kidding me? I, I love your Micro Four Thirds cameras and I've invested in the glass. I mean, I've got upwards of, I think, let's see, three prime lenses, the lens that I love and shoot most of the time with now, the 12 to 35 kit lens and my like really beginner level telephoto lens. So that is what, three, four, five, like six or seven lenses that I've invested into my Micro Four Thirds system. Um, and I was like, ah, and I, you know, and I've got my nice G9 camera, I've got a G7 camera. I've spent some money on Panasonic Micro Four Thirds because I love these cameras. They're amazing. And so when I first heard that they were going to full frame, finally, I was like, oh, of course, right after I've spent like a year just pouring money into this company and their Micro Four Thirds system. A um, little bit discouraged, but then I actually got to thinking, and I want to talk to you guys about what I believe is a little bit is a little bit more of a. This may not be the greatest thing in the world. We've all loved the Sony cameras so much so that Canon finally came out with a full frame mirrorless, the EOS R, um, which I would definitely love to get my hands on and try that camera. It looks really really cool, but there's a few things that um, that camera has spec-wise, feature-wise, that actually Tony, I think Northrop is his name, um, brought up in his, in his announcement video of Panasonic Full Frame, and that is the 4K crop. And that's what I wanna talk with you guys tonight as to why I think Micro Four Thirds may actually still have a place, and it's interesting, we may have all rushed to get that full frame DSLR videographer friendly camera as quick to market by 
you know, loving the Canon 1DX Mark II, loving the Sony cameras, and, you know, now Nikon has a full-frame mirrorless, Panasonic is finally coming out with one, and so it's really interesting, and the biggest downside, and this hasn't been confirmed yet, so, you know, Panasonic has not come out and said that this will happen, but just based on what I've seen with the EOS R, the Canon full-frame mirrorless, I'm a little bit worried. And that is 4K crop. Now, 4K crop, at first, I thought was just a burden. It was something that happened. For whatever reason, camera companies cropped their 4K, and I had no idea why. Um, finally learned today what it is. I'm going to do my best to explain it to you guys if you don't know what it is, because I think it's really interesting. But basically, in a nutshell, the reason why they have to do 4K crop is because the sensor is so much bigger. So cameras, guys, are basically little funnels that capture light. Light comes in and then the sensors, the thing underneath the lens here, is what is actually the receiver of that data. Catches the data, the electrons, or not the electrons, the photons, sorry and makes an image out of it. Now, with a Micro Four Thirds or even something like a GoPro, you're talking about a pretty small sensor. This one's extremely small. This one's quite a bit bigger, but still small by most camera standards. When you start getting to the full frame realm, you are looking at massive resolutions. So when you talk about stills and photography, this camera, the G7, can shoot 16 megapixel stills, which is, I mean, actually, I don't even know the dimensions, but it is well above, and I should look this stuff up and know this before I make videos for you guys, but 16 megapixels is substantially higher resolution than 4K by a long shot. The G9 shoots 20 megapixel stills, and this is a camera that I've seen wedding photographers use. It's not an unprofessional camera by any stretch of the imagination, but it's only a 20 megapixel still. The new Panasonic S series will shoot a 47 megapixel still because uh, it is a full frame sensor. That is, I, I got made fun of in my last video for saying this, but that is bonkers. That is a huge, huge resolution. And so really what, you know, what is the takeaway from that? Well, the takeaway is, is that in order to make that huge sensor, you know, this big sensor compressed down into video, you have to take this basically massive funnel and turn it into a much lower resolution video. Now in 2018, full HD 1080p is completely it's almost getting old, right? It's going the way of the dodo. Not completely, because we still live on the internet and 4K is, you know, hard to stream, but it's it's going there. 4K TVs, 4K monitors, 4K streaming, it's coming, it's here. It's pretty much mainstream, I would say. Maybe not quite, but it's getting there. Um, so 1080 is really, while still very passable and looks very good, especially if it's a good quality 1080, is getting old, it's solved. And so to go from that massive sensor size down to 1080, it's not a big number crunching problem. You're able to cut out tons of data. We know how to compress that. And so it's actually taking quite a bit of data, cutting it down into small data, and then um, you get that final video result. And that's why 1080, generally speaking, doesn't actually have a crop. I need to look it up. I don't think the EOS R has a 1080 crop. Comment down below if you know. Um, but I don't, I think the crop is only on the 4K. So why is there a crop on the 4K? Well, it's, <laughs> it's simple. And the reason being is, is that you can't process that much data in a camera. Maybe Panasonic will crack this code, but to go from something like a 47 megapixel still that captures that much data to try and get it down to something like 4K 30, or I mean, 4K 60, which is what is promised in the new Panasonic cameras, is that they will have the, it'll continue to have 4K 60, which is the greatest feature of the GH5 and the G9, both Micro Four Thirds cameras, is that 4K 60. It's delicious, it's amazing, it looks great, and it's 60 frames per second. It's a cool, fantastic feature. If you guys are on the fence about like wondering, you know, how good it looks, you know, it, it, it's a winning case to get one of those cameras, but you know, we'll see early 2019 how this full frame thing pans out. 
it may be cropped. And the reason is, is because when you're taking that, you gotta compress it down. And basically the solution right now is to turn off edges of the sensor, make it a smaller sensor so that you can actually process that data and get 4K, in Canon's case, just 4K in general in the camera, it crops. And then Panasonic is, they're promising 4K 60. And if it's not cropped, then basically my worries go to the wayside and I'm completely camera envy within less than a year of buying their top tier photography and probably second tier-ish video camera, maybe not quite. It's a great video camera. The G9 is an amazing video camera. 4K60, 4K30, 4K24, 180 frames per second, 1080p, so full HD. The Micro Four Thirds Panasonic cameras are complete badasses. They're monsters, they're beefy. There's a reason why people shoot with them. It's because there's no crop. And so why is there no crop? Well, it's because they're Micro Four Thirds sensors. They don't have all of that data that they have to compress or as much. They still have a lot, but not as much. And so they're able to jump that gap and actually shoot 4K 60. And so after learning about this, Unless Panasonic's S, S series, S series, right? Yeah, S series is able to not crop their 4K footage with a full frame camera, which I'm not sure, I think Sony does too. It might be small, but Sony does as well. If Panasonic can bridge that gap, then they've bridged the gap for me and I'm camera envy. I'm sitting here going, dang it, micro four thirds, Panasonic combo, completely obsolete, micro four, or, uh, Panasonic full frame, the way to go. And so that's a little bit of a huge bummer. Now, we'll see how it goes. Again, to compress a 47 megapixel sensor down to 4K60, there's some serious data movement, data crunching going on inside the camera overheating issues, you name it, it's gonna be hard to do. So most likely it will crop, just like the Canon. And the Canon doesn't even shoot 4K 60. The Canon, I believe, only does 4K 30 at best, um, and then 1080 60, and it doesn't even do high frame rate 1080 in the EOS R. Um, so that camera is, you know, in some ways really cool. I'd love to try it, but kind of a disappointment on paper. Um, autofocus is great, color science is great, quality is great. I mean, the EOS R is an awesome camera, but, you know, the thing that I've loved about Panasonic cameras and why I started with this G7 and upgraded to the G9 is that they are just, they have no fear of fitting tons of features into small packages. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it all pans out, guys. I'm excited to kind of keep talking about it on the show. We'll see how that full frame, you know, turns out in the long run. Um, I've got my hopes high if they could do no crop. You know, that's a big deal. But okay, so why is crop even a big deal? I mean, I'm sitting here going like, ah, crop sucks. Well, look at this image that I'm shooting now. I think I'm at like, you know, 18-ish, which would be 36-ish millimeters, um, kind of cropped in on my face. If I switch to 4K, boom, suddenly I'm way more cropped in and my lens essentially loses its base width. It can no longer can go as wide. And for some, maybe not a big deal. For me, kind of a big deal because I like how wide this lens goes. I like that I can flip it into 4K, not getting cropped, looks great. 4K 60, not getting cropped, looks great. Flip it back into my 180 slow motion, not getting cropped. And if there is a crop, it's minimal. Um, it's just, it's cool. It's a really cool feature. And so I'm sitting here wondering, is Panasonic going to end Micro Four Thirds? Part of me says yes, because I believe the direction forward, especially with how the market is going, is figure out how to get that big sensor into 4K60 without having crop. That's kind of the next big problem, whoever solves that. If it is Panasonic coming out, coming soon, wow, I want that camera really bad. If not, then I'm kind of waiting. I'm gonna keep rocking my micro four thirds of course, and it'd be really hard to justify upgrading again with all of my glass. I'm sure they'll have adapters, I would think, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, really, really exciting times. It's cool that these companies keep pushing each other to make 
better and better full frame cameras, which is only making us as creators and, you know, small film directors and mo trying to make little short films or big films, whatever. It's only bridging that gap closer and closer where we can get high quality images and video in like smaller and smaller packages. Um, it was a big deal when Panasonic came out with the G7 that had 4K 30 in this tiny package. It's a big deal if they can do 4K 60 in a full frame camera. So we'll just have to wait and see. But as of right now, I am no longer disappointed and sad because I'm just sitting here on my death row waiting for the world's greatest camera to come out. And I'm not gonna be able to justify it because I just invested all this money throughout the last year into my Micro Four Thirds camera. But it remains to be seen. We'll see how it turns out. We'll see if there's a 4K crop and we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, let's make sure we're still recording. Okay, we're still recording. All right, so that is the end of the show for tonight. I don't know how long this is. Um, shooting in 1080, 30. We're gonna try and compress this down because it's gonna be longer videos. So I think I'll up res it to 4K, but not necessarily, um, what am I trying to say here? Not shoot it in 4K. So tell me if you know, notice a difference. Um, I'm curious how it turns out. Um, as far as other updates go, I, I need to basically get back to John's video. Um, Kevin's video sucked away my weekend and most of Monday and now Tuesday? No, yeah, Monday and then, yeah, mostly Monday. Um, today is Wednesday night. Um, work has been crazy. So the game plan right now is to get back on John's video, edit that. Um, I'm sure I'll have conversation along the way. We're pretty close to done with it. I just need to do kind of a few little touch-up stuff. Um, and then after that, I kind of want to make actually a little promotional video with Emily's wedding footage and just kind of have that for when they get back from their honeymoon, send it off. I'm really excited about that one. But, you know, then we've got Jordan and I have to figure out exactly how we're going to do that. We've thrown around a couple of ideas. Maybe we each do two versions, two promos, two full length ones um, and just kind of see what we come up with. And I mean, maybe they'll want four videos. I mean, you know, it's their wedding, right? Like four videos, who cares? That's awesome. They're getting a ton of value. So we'll see what she says. I'm still piecing together that. And then also, I mean, I'm already brainstorming my next personal project. Um, we'll see how that goes. I loved how Kevin's video turned out with the plane thing. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out, make sure to go um, check it out. Send me a like, send me a comment. Um, had a ton of fun making that video, totally changed the direction on how I want to do this channel, which is really exciting. And let's see, yeah, I think that's all. Let's uh, let's wrap it there. Um, and I'll catch you next time, guys, on this show. I would imagine I'll have more episodes of this before my next project comes out. Um, yeah, full frame, 4K, Panasonic, pretty exciting. We'll have to see what they do with it. But anyway, peace out. You guys have a great night, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.